Hey, it's Pete Hink. Today I am going to be talking about the blue-green algae blooms. Something that I uh, predicted would be extremely bad this summer and it turns out Lake Okeechobee is a total wreck. And watching one of my Connors videos with the In the River Keepers, uh, even the local lakes in his neighborhood are filled with blue-green algae. Now you guys, it doesn't need to be that way. You know, I told about the spraying of the plant life, the killing of the weeds and everything and how that basically you're killing the filter system. So let me show you what it's supposed to be look like. The lake behind me, and this is my house, has uh, not been sprayed. So the lake has to be over 40 years old. So it's well established. There's houses around it, a couple of churches. So it's not in a homeowner's association. So we have control about what happens in this lake. Now if you look at the lake, the first thing you'll notice is the amount of weeds in aquatic plant life that's going around it. Around mine, yes, there's quite a bit. Yeah, I cleared a few areas around the dock out and I take what I take out of the lake, I sit there and I put it in compost and it, it makes really good, uh, really good soil. But um, let's talk about how the water gets to the lake in the first place. In our neighborhood, it basically drains across the fronts of the yards, like in most neighborhoods. And then, the interesting thing is, once it gets to the area, and it's right on the neighboring, my neighbor and myself, it'll drain across the lawn to the backyard. Not in a culvert, not in a pipe. It drains across the grass, and the grass is actually filtering the water as it gets closer to the lake. Now there's a little retention, I call it a little retention pond area, where we put some boulders and kept to keep the erosion down. And this area here, it flows into, and it's an area that's going to collect sediment. And there's a bunch of aquatic plant life in there that helps filter the water. It goes through these little lakes, or ponds, whatever you want to call them, underneath a bridge to the main lake. Now the main lake, if you look, there's about 30 feet of thick vegetation from where the water comes into the lake to it actually meets the lake. This whole area is a giant filter system. Okay, and what the FWC and a lot of the homeowner associations do, they would spray all that and kill all that, killing the filter. So this is actually filtering the water as it gets to the lake. Now, we've had a lot of rain. The water quality is, I can see three feet down, which isn't bad considering. A lot of these other uh, ponds and lakes around, it's a mud hole, you can't see two inches. But look at the amount of fish life that's in this lake. It's, it, is, it is amazing. It may look like weeds from the surface, but when you look and go down into it, it's fish habitat where fish live and thrive and turtles. And you got birds that feed on it. And uh, it is a whole ecosystem. And just remember, when you spray all the weeds and you kill all the weeds in the lake, you're killing the thing that produces oxygen. So you kill all the weeds, there's nothing to produce oxygen for the fish. The fish need oxygen to live. And the turtles and everything else that's living in the, in the lake. You kill all the weeds, you kill all the oxygen, so it turns into a dead zone. And then the only thing that can grow is algae blue-green algae will thrive and explode. Now it's a natural thing. I could get blue-green algae in my lake, but I have enough aquatic plant life that it won't. And here, you look at this here, this is what off one of my docks. The, you know, the uh, plant life, weeds as some people would call it, extends, man, a good 30 yards into the lake. And then it drops off, and then it's clear water. It's been like that for years. It hasn't overtaken the lake. But more than anything, it's a nursery. I can't tell you the amount of fish that are in this lake. Largemouth bass, bluegill, you've got um, shiners, and you know, you got tilapia and you got cichlids. It is amazing that I can sit on my dock and just watch all the fish. Watch the alligators swim up, watch the blue herons, the egrets, and all the other birds that are feeding off the little fish in this area. When you spray that, you kill it all. So if you're in a homeowners association, I would strongly suggest really push for stop spraying. They're going to fight you tooth and nail. They just want the water to look clean, 
They want it just open all the way to the water and they don't want vegetation in there, which is dumb because that water turns into a, a cancer cluster. It really does. So anyway, this is what it can look like. I'm going to do another video on things you could do in your local lakes to make it something like this. I still got work to do on the lake, you know, but it's a far cry better than what is out there and what's going on in Lake Okeechobee and a lot of these uh, other lakes throughout Florida. It doesn't have to be. Let them fill up with weeds. You'd be a lot better off if it was totally covered with weeds, then the weeds are eating the nutrients. So, enough of my rant. Time to start doing some fishing videos. I know a lot of you guys miss that, but yeah, I'm gonna get back to that. But if we don't take care of this, there's gonna be no fish. So, this I put a higher priority than doing a fishing video. So, till next time, this is Pete Hink. We'll see ya.